It finally happened. China's 60 billion underwater high-speed train is here. China wants to take it a step further by building a 13,000 kilometer high-speed underwater railway system. That would be one of the most expensive projects ever undertaken. In this video, we'll talk about China's 60 billion dollar underwater high-speed train project. The transportation industry has introduced numerous new amazing fuel kinds, touch-free technology, robot assistance, and autonomous cars as a result of technological advancements. China, on the other hand, wants to go a step further by building a 13,000 kilometer high-speed underwater railway line that will stretch from mainland China to Siberia, under the sea across the Bering Strait into Alaska, and then continue to Canada and finally the United States. China has had no high-speed railways at the start of the 21st century. Slow and frequently uncomfortable trains plotted over this huge country, with low average speeds making routes like Shanghai-Beijing a test of travel endurance. Today, the picture is radically different. The world's most populated country possesses, by far, the most extensive network of high-speed railways. No less than 37,900 kilometers of lines crisscross the country, connecting all of the country's major megacities, all of which have been built since 2008. How did China build the first submarine ever built anywhere on the globe? What about rapid transit? People all around the world have been paying attention to China's infrastructure progress since the beginning of this decade. Their efforts have put the world's infrastructures to the test, allowing China to construct one technical marvel after another. They have one of the world's most extensive rail networks, and its high-speed rail is both the fastest and the longest. No country has ever exceeded it to this day. The rate at which China is moving has also not slowed. The first undersea high-speed rail line to be built in China will have a top speed of 350 kilometers per hour and will require a 60 billion dollar investment. This gigantic undertaking will push the boundaries of what humans are capable of building. This technical innovation has also taken the entire world by surprise. If you had visited China 10 years ago, you would have learned that the country did not begin building high-speed rail until more than 40 years after industrialized nations. Despite this, China has made significant progress in the development of high-speed rail since the completion of the country's first high-speed rail line in 2008, which was expected to achieve speeds of up to 350 kilometers per hour. Although this may seem far-fetched, underwater railway lines are not too distant in the future, with Japan now operating its own underwater railway line known as the Seikan Railway. Japan's 53.85 kilometer railway tunnel connects Honshu Island with Hokkaido Island through track 140 meters below the seafloor. The Sekan Tunnel is now the world's deepest and longest railway tunnel, with around 23.3 kilometers of it buried beneath the seabed, making it the world's longest undersea tunnel. If Japan can achieve this spectacular underwater train experience, what is stopping China from doing the same? With normal flight times from Russia to the United States exceeding 10 hours, the installation of the underwater bullet train would allow travelers to travel between the two countries in as little as 20 minutes. This idea was first proposed in 2014, with sources saying that China was in advanced talks with Russia, which has been contemplating the construction of a railway line between the Bering Sea for years. The ambitious idea gained widespread media attention at the time, with many reporting that it would strengthen commercial ties between China, Russia, Canada, and the United States. It goes without saying that the construction of this project would be difficult, given the huge expenses and, perhaps most importantly, the dynamic political relations between the United States, Russia, and China. China's objective is to make high-speed rail the preferred form of domestic long-distance transport, but these new lines have far-reaching consequences. They are a symbol of the country's economic might, rapid modernization, growing technical expertise, and increasing prosperity, much like Japan's Shinkansen were in the 1960s. For China's ruling Communist Party and its leader Xi Jinping, High-speed rail is also a potent tool for social cohesiveness, political influence, and the merger of diverse regions with distinct cultures into the mainstream. Rapport Chinese businesses are among the first in the world to adopt innovative technologies like autonomous or driverless train operation, and advanced signals and control technology, not satisfied with pushing the boundaries of speed, endurance, and civil engineering. The driverless bullet trains that connect Beijing and Zhangjiakou in northern Hebei province can reach speeds of up to 350 kilometers per hour, making them the world's fastest autonomous trains. The new route, which opened in December 2019 as part of the preparations for the Beijing 2022 Winter Olympic and Paralympic Games, has decreased travel time from 3 hours to less than 60 minutes for the 174-kilometer journey. The quickest trains make the journey in 45 minutes. 
It was announced in 2014 that the 8,078-mile train voyage will travel from China through Russia, then to Canada, before reaching in the United States. According to Chinese media, if built, the proposed rail link between China and the United States would be the most expensive mega-project in history, according to tech startups. Russia is thought to be already on board. Russia has been considering a railway line between the Bering Strait for years, and both Russia and Chinese engineers believe the tunnel can be built effectively using existing technologies. The China-U.S. railway project, which is expected to be four times longer than the world's longest rail tunnel, the Seikan Tunnel in Japan, would be funded and built by China. This 125-mile stretch would mean the tunnel was submerged as the train passed the Bering Strait. Chinese officials were contemplating the train's path, but insisted that it was doable. According to one publication, the government possesses the necessary technology and resources to complete a project of this magnitude. We're already having discussions. Russia has been thinking about it for a long time, said Wang Mengshu, a railway expert at the Chinese Academy of Engineering, in an interview. The projected China-Russia-Canada-America railway will be 1,800 miles longer than the Trans-Siberian Railway and four times the length of the English Channel Tunnel. This would allow visitors to go all the way to the United States in just two days. There is a lot of discussion about whether or not the railway will be built. Nonetheless, considering China's extensive rail network, it is feasible. Trains are often regarded as the most environmentally friendly mode of public transportation. The greenhouse effect of gas emissions per kilometer from railway transportation is 80% less than that of cars. A normal train route may transport 50,000 passengers each hour. A train journey emits only 14 grams of CO2 per passenger every kilometer, compared to around 285 grams for air travel. High-speed rail lines, which can transport both passengers and freight, are especially efficient. They often travel at speeds of around 200 miles per hour and provide convenience, safety, lesser environmental impact, and higher community benefits when compared to driving, according to a recent report. While it is technically possible, creating an undersea tube halfway around the world would be unlike anything that has come before. It would necessitate some of the world's most brilliant engineering minds. The tunnel would float in the water after being anchored to the sea floor. It would have to be sturdy enough to withstand the pressure of the surrounding water and prevent any water intake. Diplomatic tensions are another aspect to consider. The railway would connect some of the world's largest and most powerful countries, and all governments involved would have to unwaveringly back the initiative. With the relations between China and the U.S. at an all-time low, it may take some time before such a rail link involving such high cost and technological know-how can be envisaged. That's all. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to like and subscribe to our channel and ring the bell icon to get more videos.